defense. It's been a big problem for the Giants over the last couple of seasons. Cost them a lot of wins. This year, they did make some personnel changes. Matt Chapman, Jung-Hoo Lee, Nick Ahmed, guys who are going to improve that defense. So what are the early returns? Also, a full season of Patrick Bailey. What are the early returns on the Giants' defense? You are Locked On Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspick, and on the show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday, talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, been hosting this show for over five years, and I'm a lifelong Giants fan. Thank you for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. So check us out there if you have not already, and please hit that subscribe button wherever it is that you're following the show. Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit it, I have a competitive side, and it is a big fan of Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or Google Play. And coming up on today's show, we're going to be answering your mailbag questions. Uh, Apologies that this is coming out a little bit late. Those of you who are watching live, welcome. Welcome. Uh, we are live on YouTube. We've been doing that a lot lately. I figured out how to do it. It took me a while. <laughs> but um, otherwise, if you're not listening live, you may catch this a little late, maybe after tonight's game. Giants taking on the D-backs tonight. But without further delay, let's just jump into the questions. NDE The Rock asks, what are the defensive metrics? Are they better than last year? And so where I go, my kind of default, I think the best... And we're, we're seeing evidence of this with fan graphs, for example, using kind of moving over to outs above average or just kind of stat cast based defensive analysis versus, you know, defensive runs saved and ultimate zone rating and stuff like that. It's all I have personally done that. And now we're seeing it done by, you know, fan graphs is using this stuff in their war calculations instead of the old stuff. And so. First place I go is simply baseballsavant.com where they have stat cast outs above average. And for the Giants, I, ha- I actually hadn't looked at this this season. I've just kind of watched them. And my guess was to say, I think they've been pretty good. I don't, it has, defense hasn't really been an issue for the Giants. And sure enough, they rank fifth in baseball with five uh, total outs above average. Again, fifth in baseball. And this does not count catchers. Uh, catchers are not included in outs above average, so we'll separately check on Patrick Bailey, and I will follow through and and check on last season and the season before when they were really abysmal. Last year, by outs above average, they were good defensively in the infield, but the outfield was a problem. So we can break it down in so many different ways, but I do want to break it down by specific players on the Giants because sometimes you can have one player be so good and then it like makes it look like the whole team is good but it's just one guy kind of carrying the load so if i search i don't want to have to have people be qualified because we're so early in the season yeah so um if i search for giants players this season so far we've got tyro estrada and nick ahmed each with plus two outs above average leading the giants and mike yastrzemski and matt chapman did I say with plus two? Mike Yastrzemski and Matt Chapman at plus one. Uh, Jung Hu Lee, Tyler Fitzgerald, and Michael Conforto at zero. Outs above average. So average is what that's saying. And it is positionally relevant, right? Like average center fielder, average. I mean, for a guy like Fitzgerald who moves all around, it does combine all the different positions that he plays. And then Wilmer Flores and Lamont Wade each at minus one out above average. And so... Yeah, it's not hard to see why that puts them in the top um, five of teams in the league when there's really nobody killing you defensively and you've got a couple of... I mean, 
the, like I keep saying, Nick Ahmed is just the arm. It's the only thing that isn't a strength. Tyro Estrada showed me last year. It was a big emphasis of mine even going into last year that I didn't think he was b as bad as people were kind of saying that he was based on one year of defensive runs saved, saying that he wasn't a good defender. And sure enough, like, had a great season by outs above average. And I've seen, like, just watching Tyro Estrada, I mean, he is a really solid, uh, if not really good defensive second baseman and just makes, I'm probably jinxing, I always say this, but I'm probably jinxing him and he'll make a bunch of mistakes tonight. But nonetheless, I mean, they, I can't really say that I've seen any significant defensive struggles from anybody. And so then to look at uh, last season, let's just do that and look at overall um, for the teams, you know, for the Giants, let's see, I've got to get out of looking at just the Giants and uh, change the year to 2023. Last year overall, in outs above average, the Giants ranked uh, they ranked ninth, so it's not that they were bad. And this is what I'm saying: if you if you look at just that, it it looks pretty fine. But if you look at the individual players who made it up, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a lot of Tyro Estrada, who was at plus nineteen, next closest player at plus six, and then you had Luis Matos at minus five. That was an issue. He was not good in center. Lamont Wade was minus four. Conforto minus three. Casey Schmidt minus three. Wilmer Flores minus two. So when I say whatever they were as a team, you have to keep in mind 19 for Tyro Estrada and then the next closest player at plus six. So that's just worth keeping in mind. And then if we look at 2022, things are going to get ugly because that's when things were, were bad. I mean, you had Jock Peterson at minus 11. This is when he was playing way too much outfield. Um, and overall for the Giants that season, 2022, they were 28th at minus 34 outs above average. So anyway, uh, so far, so good. It's not surprising to me. I've I've been impressed. There was some early struggles for Jung-Hoo Lee a little bit. But I think the arm is like an underrated asset there. I really am impressed with his arm. And the more I see of him out there, the more he gets comfortable, the more he looks like a real center fielder. He's got 25-year-old's legs, you know, like, you know, speed is one of those things that peaks young. And so for him to be 25 is kind of an important element of why he's a good fit in center field. And then, of course, like Chapman and Ahmed, we knew that was going to be a strength defensively. And if Tyra Estrada could repeat what he was able to do, um, or not not even necessarily repeat, but just uh, continue to be good, I mean, then your infield is just looking really good. And then we talk about Patrick Bailey. So let's just check in on 2024 Patrick Bailey, who I was saying don't be worried about after there was... Um, you know, he, he had some struggle, uh, throwing struggles early on in the season. But if we look at, I mean, let's just look at catcher framing and see where Patrick Bailey ranks. Uh, last year, he was number one. This year right now, he's number nine out of 54 qualified catchers. Number nine with a 49% called strike rate on pitches that are borderline. League average is 46.2%. And... In terms of catcher throwing, uh, Patrick Bailey ranks sixth with one catcher's caught stealing above average. And so this is factoring in complex stuff like when a, ba a base is basically stolen on a pitcher and there's really nothing a catcher can do. Patrick Bailey has two or three caught stealings with an estimated uh, caught stealing number of two. So he's got one above average, like I said. And then... That's basically, I mean, framing, blocking, I guess, is the last thing. And and this was something he wasn't great at last year. And I would imagine, yeah, he's 51st with minus two blocks above average out of 58. But I, as I have explained on previous shows, framing is by far the most important thing and translates to run prevention way more than blocking because every single pitch is an opportunity to, like, steal a strike, whereas blocking... You know, if you have like a block here or there that you don't make, it just doesn't make or break 
you as much like framing it's kind of just under the radar it really adds up because there's so many chances for it on there's so many pitches a game that are borderline so basically so far so good for the giants defensively coming up in just a minute though more questions and answers we're going to get into uh the question when is the yaz and slater experiment ending i'm getting tons of questions about this mike yastrzemski people ready to throw them off the bus so we'll get into it in just a minute and before we do Today's episode is brought to you in part by Policy Genius. Policy Genius is the smarter way to buy insurance. Their proprietary technology makes it easy to compare personalized quotes and policies from top rated insurers side by side. Policy Genius's team of licensed experts is here to answer questions, handle paperwork, and help you make decisions with confidence. They work for you not for the insurance companies. From exploring coverage options to making policy adjustments as your life changes, Policy Genius is your advocate at every step. And Policy Genius is committed to your information remaining secure. Your security is our priority. They use industry leading security practices to help keep your information safe. Check life insurance off your to do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked on MLB or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on MLB. Today's episode is also also brought to you in part by Monopoly Go. Monopoly Go is my go-to place because I have a competitive side that you all have learned about in the last week or so as I keep telling you about it, but it is for sure true. My competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times for crying out loud. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part is messing with my friends. I can cha- I can charge them rent. Oh, I love it. On my iconic properties, just like in classic Monopoly. But now I can also heist their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboards show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is, and it better be me. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people around the world in timed tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on Google Play and the App Store. All right, as promised, we're going to get to this Mike Yastrzemski endless uh, debate. It is the the Belt Wars ended and the Yastrzemski Wars have begun and are deep in 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 we're deep into them. Uh, thanks again for making Locked On Giants your first listen every day. Every day is tomorrow. Breaking down game one of this four game series with Arizona. Logan Webb on the mound for the Giants. Big game, big series early in the season. Uh, a little bit of a test for the Giants. See how they go toe to toe with the. Reigning National League champs, a team that's given them some trouble in recent years at times. Um, I do just want to remind you that you can catch every pitch of the Giants' hometown broadcast with Sirius XM. Just download the SXM app and search the word Giants. Also, not only do we cover your team every day, but now we're giving you instant episodes after every single game. Check out the Locked on Giants postcast right here on the Locked On Giants podcast feed, as well as streaming on the Locked On Sports Bay Area YouTube channel live after every game. So tonight, after the game, Locked On Sports Bay Area on YouTube, Eric Engel going to be breaking it down live. You can be in the in the chat and commenting and all that good stuff. So get rapid reaction to all the biggest moments with the Locked On Giants postcast. So next question comes from... Who does it come from? It comes from Eric, among several others. Uh, Eric just puts it simply and says, when is the Yaz slash Slater experiment ending? And my response to this, I mean, basically, that w- this was the lead question in the last mailbag I did a week ago. Um, so I've kind of already answered it. So you could kind of just go back and listen to that. But I get it. People are still asking it. Um First of all, it's not an experiment. 
these guys have been doing this for years and years and years. So I, I would not call it an experiment personally. Um, and like, I, I guess I should be more fair and say, I understand what you're asking. When are they going to like, how much longer can they let them struggle like this? But I'll just say how many, how many plate appearances does Austin Slater have? 22, 22. And his expected numbers are about, you know, let's just say way, way, way better than his actual results. And he's got a long track record of hitting left-handed pitching really well and in the role that he's currently playing in. And so, and he hit the ball really hard in Miami a lot. And so he's showing signs of coming out of it. Yaz less so, and he's not been playing as much. And, but again, we're talking about 39 plate appearances versus 2,146 in his career. Okay. So you take a sample, random sample of 39 plate appearances out of a guy's career of over 2,000, and you're going to find MVP type performance. You're going to find this type of performance. So it's just not. So in, in terms of like, if you're honestly asking when, uh, not now. It's just too early. It's Yaz has played 13 games. He's got 39 plate appearances. It's just not enough. Somebody else asked, like, there are all these stats that you keep saying, like, it's too early to to look into them too much, and they haven't stabilized yet. What at what point do do we consider them more stable? And I said at least 45 to 50 games. That's kind of industry wide, like. Uh, practice to kind of believe that your team you can't really evaluate fully and even then it's still too early but for at least 45 games and so you're going to have your ups your downs you're going to go through hot basically by that point everyone will have had their cold streaks their hot streaks and multiples of them and you'll have a pretty good sense of what your team looks like and so the Giants have played what 19 games so we're not even quite to the halfway kind of point there. And so just another, you know, I would imagine, you know, by the end of another 20 games or so, Mike Yastrzemski's numbers are going to look a lot better and it could very well start, start tonight. And so again, not an experiment. They've been doing this. It's been an effective platoon, like in 2021, when they won 107 games, basically Yaz and Slater were the same as they've been in other years. Like they weren't the problem when they won 107 games, like no one was the problem really, but it's not like they had career years that year. They both actually Slater had a down year in 2021 compared to what he did the next couple of years. And so it's a, it's a good platoon, like as far as platoons go. And I mean, eventually I have said this, but Yastrzemski is 34 or he'll be, he'll be 34, excuse me, in August. And so you do start to think, okay, well, there's a possibility of decline in there. And, but so like by the end of, by mid-May, by the end of May, uh, if Yaz is like extremely struggling still, then sure, talk to me then. But when it's April 18th and he's only played in 13 games, I'm just never, ever like for any player going to make a big conclusion and a big fuss about 13 games of anybody's performance and so that's going to be a theme later on when we talk about some other players as well uh zach asks is luis mato still the default call up for an injured outfielder elliot ramos has been tearing it up in triple a and bob melvin seemed to like him a lot in spring training that is true elliot ramos was uh mentioned by name by bob melvin multiple times so let's just compare uh, what are the what are the numbers looking like for Matos? I know I got a lot of feedback on this after the last episode versus Elliot Ramos. First of all, Ramos is 24 and a half and Matos is 22 and less than a half. So Matos is younger and playing at the same level. But yeah, if you look at what has Ramos done in AAA this year, it has been um, quite good. I mean, he's hitting 333, 403 on base, 650 slugging. And that's following up on last season when he hit well in AAA as well. And so, yeah, I do see kind of what people are saying here that 
maybe Elliot Ramos deserves a shot now. Like the problem was like in previous years, he wasn't hitting in the upper minors. And so if you're not hitting in the upper minors, what are the chances you're going to just start hitting in the majors? Like it doesn't usually work that way. Whereas, yeah, looking at um, Luis Matos's numbers in AAA, I mean, he, he crushed it last year in, in just 32 games, but this year off to a slow start, hitting 220, 298 on base, 400 slugging. You like to see the the strikeout rate is only 8.8%, but otherwise, I mean, let me just talk about projections. All of the projection systems have Matos as being more productive at the major league level than Elliot Ramos. Every single one of the ones up on Fangraphs, Steamer, the Bat, the Bat X, ATC, these are all different projection systems. And every single one of them has Matos as basically league average offensively, which is pretty good for a 22 year old with almost no major league experience. And they've got Ramos at anywhere from about 15 to 20% below average for what it's worth. And that, you know, they, these projection systems know about, know a thing or two about minor league performance and how it translates. So uh, it's a good question. I don't know, like if somebody did get injured, if they would go to Elliot Ramos versus uh, Luis Matos, probably, maybe because of just the fact that he's he's the one swinging the bat well right now, and maybe just try to catch lightning in a bottle and see what you have. But I still think Matos is a much better prospect personally than Elliot Ramos, just based on what I've seen and also based on kind of industry consensus. So let me know what you think. But I mean. Yeah, that's that's where I'm at. So anyway, coming up in just a minute, we are going to get into thoughts, early thoughts on Jung Hoo Lee and Blake Snell. Is there anything positive that I've seen about Blake Snell with his ERA of almost 13? We'll get into it in just a minute. And before we do. Today's episode is brought to you in part by our good friends over at Prize Picks. That's right. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. Spring training is in the distant past and baseball season is in full swing. So don't miss your chance to add your favorite players like I've been doing from the diamond in your prize pick entries. Whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, or first inning runs, take your pick of more or less and add them to your prize picks entry today. I did like total bases for Jorge Soler. I did, and I took over and I got that one. I did um, uh, Ross Stripling. He kind of had a good game and I didn't expect him to, so I didn't do so well on that one. But anyway, it's a ton of fun. Uh, to get in on the action and prize picks is available in the great great state of california so download the app today and use code locked on mlb for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars download the app today and use code locked on mlb for a first deposit match up to a hundred bucks pick more pick less it's that easy all right as promised we're gonna get to the last batch of questions uh thanks again for making locked on giants your first listen every day every day is tomorrow S simple we're going to be breaking down this game tonight with logan webb on the mound i think it's you know a big game to set the tone in this series try to you know you know it's a four game series if you if you come away with a win in that first game it takes a lot of pressure off of you um, especially you're at home you've got your ace on the mound Big game, in my opinion. We'll be breaking it down tomorrow. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Do you have to turn down the volume from all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Also, remember, you can catch every pitch of the Giants' hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search the word Giants. Um, 
Sorry, I had to send a quick message there. Uh, okay, so <laughs> someone's arriving at my house. Need to need them to be quiet for a moment as we get to more questions. Um, Giants fan twenty eight says, "What are your thoughts on Jung Hoo Lee's potential of a three hundred batting average? I think they're as good as almost anybody in the game. Because simply put, I mean, like when you don't strike out a lot, uh, that gives you the highest chance because." Uh, there are more balls in play, and even if you have a league average average on balls in play, um, if you like never strike out and you have a like average average on balls in play, you're gonna hit 300. That's just like the math of it. So his strikeout rate is low; it's 11. Uh, percent He's hitting 270, even though he's hit into some bad luck. So it's possible. I also don't personally really care about the 300 number. It's kind of a really high standard given that the league average batting average is 240 um ish and it used to you know used to be much higher so but the chances are as good as just about anybody he's making a ton of contact and i'm i i like the at bat quality um you know he's like quote unquote struggled a little bit and the batting average is still 270 he's hit into a lot of bad luck so I think the chances are, I mean, I wouldn't say like they're great because that's just really hard to do, but it's definitely at some point in his career for sure. Like, I think that's definitely a pretty strong possibility that he could do that. Even if like, even if there's not a ton of power to go along with it, it would still be a cool accomplishment, especially right now. He's like adjusting to major league pitching and so far, so good. I mean, he's hit the ball hard into a lot of outs, and he's still been solid to me. Anyway, next question comes from Quile, who says, what have you seen that's positive about Blake Snell? And my snarky answer to this is his the back of his baseball card, right? Like his track record. But I, again, once again, I humbly apologize and say, I know this isn't what you were asking. <laughs> you weren't asking for a snarky answer, you're saying like, what have you seen from his two starts with the Giants that has been positive? But I mean, again, the track record is the most important thing. He's got a, tw uh, let me tell you this, the ERA is 1286. The expected ERA is 391. And so the, you know, he's been roughed up, but, uh, you know, maybe hasn't quite deserved it. Also velocity. The velocity has been good. Like, let's look at the average velocity on his fastball. Last year, it was 95.6. This year right now, it's 95.4. And so, hasn't lost anything on the fastball. And uh, I don't know. I mean, he's just, he looks like Blake Snell to me. He just hasn't executed pitch. He's kind of fallen behind and not been able to make a big pitch when he's needed to. It's just fluky to have an ERA around 13 and it's just two starts. It's just a total of seven innings. You know, got you know last year, I've said this. He threw nine starts. He had an ERA of five forty, and he ended up like running away with the Cy Young award because he allowed like nothing for his next twenty three starts. And so, I'm not going to sit here after seven innings and say that oh the sky is falling. That's why I say the the. His Fangraphs page, that's what I've seen that's positive about Blake Snell, but also the strikeouts. Uh, well, actually, the strikeout rate is down a little bit. Um, if you look at strikeouts per nine, it's not. Um, but strikeout percentage, which is more important and tells the story better, is down a little bit. But again, I'm not going to worry about that after two starts, seven innings. Uh, home run to fly ball ratio is an absurd 40%. That'll come down to more like 10 uh, when all is said and done, his left on base percentage is a laughable 29.4%. So, I mean, in the numbers, even I see good things because there's positive regression coming. Like he's going to regress to the mean and it's going to be in a positive direction, meaning he'll get better, not worse. And so anyway, the last question comes from Steve, who says, how does Tyler Fitzgerald compare to other utility players around the league, specifically former giant Mauricio Dubon? Dubon. It's Dubon, but people say Dubon and get mad at me when I say Dubon. And Tommy Edmond, who you expressed interest in trading for in the past. Um, uh, well, 
my answer to this is kind of the same as my answer to some of the other questions in a lot of ways in that we haven't seen enough of Tyler Fitzgerald. So, so far, I, I think he looks like a big leaguer to me. Like he, the chase rate is ridiculously low. That's kind of unbelievable. So in his major league career, chase rate is just 20%. So the patience has been really solid and you, and you like to see that. It's funny, it hasn't translated to walks because he kind of has managed to just put the ball in play a lot in his plate appearances, even though he's not chasing outside the zone so much at all. Um, career uh, batting average on balls in place, 367 at the major league level, and isolated powers, 235. So I don't know. I mean, I'm intrigued. Uh, I think that I do think of Dubon when I think of Tyler Fitzgerald and just the potential for him being – a player like that um, who has, I mean, he's already got four steals. He's got six in his career and he's never been caught, you know? So he's played three games at short, one at first, one at second, one in left, one in center, one at DH and he's pitched. And so um, Edmund is far more established. Edmund like crushes left-handed pitching. There's just a lot more we know about Tommy Edmund, but I like Tyler Fitzgerald. Um, Dubon, Dubon, um, has always, you know, had his flaws, uh, hasn't hit right-handed pitching well at all, um, for example, in his whole career. And so anyway, um, I think there's just more to see with Fitzgerald, but I like what I see so far, but we need to see more. And there, I think there's more development uh, with the bat, the strikeout rate in his major league career, 34 and percent, that needs to come down. So a uh, little more contact, a little less striking out, but I definitely like what I've seen. Anyway, that is all the time we have for today. Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. Every day is tomorrow, breaking down this important game one of this four-game series against the D-backs with Logan Webb on the mound. Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Once again, my name is Ben Kaspic. Check me out on Twitter at Ben Kaspic, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, please consider rating it or leaving a review. It helps me out so much. So thank you in advance, and thanks to everyone who's done so already. Can't wait to be with you again tomorrow. Thanks again for listening. You are now Locked on Giants.